The New War Description Part of this RMA includes a change in competing forces because most nations can't challenge the United States with a direct military force. Now that most nations have been conquered, either by military might or economic subversion, the regular state-to-state -state type of warfare will be phased out. But the United States and its allies will now be waging war against individuals and groups all across the planet. The global military campaign being used to wage this new type of warfare has been called the Global War on Terror GWOT, and the Long War LW. It was explained by the Rand Corporation in the book, in Athena's camp, this way, in the future, few rational opponents will be likely to challenge, or will even be capable of challenging, the, the United States in a contest with large, multidimensional military forces. Such an adversary, says Rand, will not seek to destroy the, the United States with military power, but to ruin its core values, particularly if those values are not consistent with their deeply held religious, cultural, or ideological beliefs. The United States Army's School of Advanced Military Studies mentioned in its May 22, 2003 report, deterring and responding to asymmetrical threats, due to the conventional military dominance, the United States will most likely face regional threats that will challenge it through asymmetric approaches, such as area denial strategies, economic competition, and information warfare. Specific names given to the small wars that will be waged globally include, Asymmetric Warfare, A, uh, Fourth Generation Warfare, 4GW, Third Wave Warfare, 3WW, Network Centric Warfare, NCW, Net War, NATO Networked Enabled Capability, NNEC, and Military Operations Other Than War, MUTW. Others are Low Intensity Conflict, LIC, Irregular Warfare, IW, and Unconventional Warfare, UW. Related terms include effects-based operations, EVO, civil military operations, CMO, and peace operations, PO. There is a variety of terms and definitions used to describe this type of warfare. The definition of a single term may be overlapping or contradictory, when multiple sources are observed. Some sources portray a particular type of warfare as synonymous with other types, thereby associating its characteristics with those other kinds. Some terms that have been replaced by more recent ones may still be used by some authors. Some are more or less theories than they are types of warfare. However, there is a pattern of strategies and tactics that these methods of warfare share, which I refer to as shared characteristics. For the scope of this study, the types of warfare just mentioned are synonymous because they have been described as such by credible sources and because I've noticed that each contain most of the shared characteristics, which are They are international, protracted political wars that are fought among the people. They are an interagency joint effort between the military, federal law enforcement and local and state law enforcement, which is known globally as the multinational force, MNF, as well as non-governmental organizations, NGOs, and intergovernmental organizations, IGOs. They use the civilian population and private sector of the host nation, HN, during civil military operations, CMO, against a state's internal enemies. They must be perceived as legitimate by the host nation's civilian population in order to gain their cooperation. They rely on psychological operations, isolation, and non-lethal weapons, typically for the destruction of the enemy's will. They use synchronization of tactics and strategies. Unity of effort slash interagency. These wars are interagency, international operations that use a combined, highly coordinated and synchronized approach to achieve unity of effort, also called unified action, during attacks. The organizations that are involved include local and state law enforcement, which cooperates with federal agencies and the host nation's military. In the United States this means the FBI, NSA, CIA, and FEMA. The military forces of most countries are participating through an allied military force called the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. They are working with the civilian population as part of civil support, also called civil military operations, CMO. Non-military participants include non-governmental organizations, NGO, private voluntary organizations, PBO, and intergovernmental organizations, IGO. Nationally, this combined force is called the interagency, globally it's called the multinational force, MNF. The private sector is also involved. So, this includes not just people in communities, but workplaces, stores, restaurants, businesses, etc. Basically all of the core entities that compose a nation are involved. Some of these activities are being directed by the United Nations, UN. Because of the advancements in communication, 
This interagency, international force, which is fused with the civilian population, functions as a single unit, or what the, the United States Army refers to as unified action. Their activities on the strategic, operational, and tactical level are closely synchronized due to technological advancements. Synchronization Synchronization is a type of unified action which consists of multiple operations conducted simultaneously in the battle space, usually at a high tempo. It is an ancient military tactic where the speed and sequence of attacks is arranged to achieve victory. It is a product of C4ISR, which will be explained shortly, and an important concept in this new type of warfare. The, the United States Army explains unified action as, the synchronization, coordination, and slash or integration of the activities of governmental and non-governmental entities with military operations to achieve unity of effort. It involves the application of all instruments of national power, including actions of other government agencies and multinational military and non-military organizations. Synchronization is an international, interagency function involving the UN, NATO, NGOs, government contractors, the private sector, as well as a HN's military, local, state, and federal government agencies. The idea is that launching multiple attacks or a series of attacks done in a particular sequence will have a multiplying effect that will immobilize, suppress, or shock the enemy, according to the, the United States Army. Synchronization occurs on the strategic, operational, and tactical level. It consists of a vertical and horizontal sharing, harmonizing, of information. On the vertical level, the type of environment, objective, and forces determine the guidance and flexibility necessary for an operation. Synchronization occurs horizontally across the battle space on the tactical level between forces and organizations. The MNF uses automated computerized methods to synchronize information. The transmission of this information occurs frequently and quickly. The activities that are synchronized continually change in relation to any new information obtained by intelligence. It involves the rapid processing and transmission of information gained by intelligence to commanders, planners, and forces in the battle space. Because of the speed at which the processing and transmission of information occurs, the attacks which are directed at an enemy may be the result of near real-time, or even real-time intelligence. In the past, force maneuvers were delayed by the transmission of information. Now, due to technological advances, it is the commanders who must wait for their previous instructions to be executed before instantaneously transmitting the next set of commands, which may be the result of real-time intelligence. The book, Understanding Information Age Warfare, by David S. Alberts, John J. Garstka, Richard E. Hayes, and David A. Signori, sponsored by Rand and Mitre Corporations, explains it this way, in fact, as the speed of decision-making and information flows associated with the C2 process increase, the dynamics attacks and movements associated with the force elements in the physical domain will define the limits of overall synchronization. Expanded Battlefield The battlefield for this new type of warfare has expanded into the civilian sector. For this reason, it's now called the battle space. The battle space is global. The battles take place among the civilian population where the military uses civilians as irregular forces. The physical architecture of the battle space has several levels. At the top is the space level which includes satellites. The near space level has UAVs and high-flying aircraft. Then there is the maneuver level which contains people, robots, vehicles, ships, and low-flying aircraft. Defense of the homeland involves a global, multi-domain battle space, proclaimed the Department of Defense in its June 2005, Strategy for Homeland and Civil Support Report. The global reach of potential and existing adversaries necessitates a global perspective. The civilian population is playing an important role in the expanded battle space, according to the DOT. In order to succeed in these new missions, the actions of the military and civilian organizations will be coordinated far more closely than they were in the past. In its network-centric warfare publication of 2000 the DOT had this to say regarding the civilian population being used by the military, although civilians have been involved as victims and in supporting combat roles throughout history, they will play an increasingly important role in the battle spaces of the future. The operational environment will expand to areas historically immune to battle, the, the United States Army tells us in its February 27, 2008 Field Manual Operations Report, including the continental United States and the territory of multinational partners, especially urban areas. All operations, it continued, will be conducted among the people and outcomes will be measured in terms of effects on populations. According to the Army, the new enemy will increasingly seek protection among the civilian population. The essential struggle of the future, they say, 
will take place primarily among civilians and will therefore require the United States security dominance in these areas. Domestic War Rooms Command and Control Centers Military campaigns have been typically directed from war rooms. They are also called command centers, or command and control centers, C2. A C2 center is a military term for a station which allows the planning, direction, and control of operations, monitoring, decision-making, and execution. The word communications was added to this term, making it C3, and eventually computers were added, amounting to C4. It is now referred to as C4ISR with the addition of intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. A more detailed explanation of this term follows. Command is the formulation of intent such as planning, control is the information obtained from the results of the action taken, as well as the conclusion as to whether or not the action was successful. Communications and computers are the hardware and software used to implement the command and control. Intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance are the hardware and software systems of sensors, people, data collectors, and platforms, as well as the use of tools to extract the information from data. These are collectively referred to as C4ISR. C4ISR has multiple interacting components including, battlespace monitoring, awareness, understanding, sense-making, command intent, battlespace management, synchronization, and information systems. Most C4ISR centers are equipped with computers and communications that collect, process, filter, store, display, and disseminate information, according to predefined policies. Physical C4ISR centers can be mobile or stationary and due to the possibility of online meetings, they may be virtual as well. Civilian Use In the late 1960s, the police in the United States began to use these centers to deal with disturbances in major cities. One of the first to be used by police in New York City is known as the Special Police Radio Inquiry Network, SPRINT. Sprint referred all incidents to the department's computer which fused it with other relevant data in the database then sent it to radio dispatchers, who observed the incident on a computer in its relation to patrol cars in the area and contacted the appropriate one. Riot control rooms which were connected to the Sprint were then set up in New York City in 1969 with closed-circuit TV cameras, deployable helicopters, and fixed cameras in the city. Similar ones were created in the late 1970s in Los Angeles. By 1969 the Directorate for Civil Disturbance Planning and Operations DPO, had built a domestic war room in the Pentagon to monitor political protests, according to a 1972 Senate Subcommittee on Constitutional Rights Report, Army Surveillance of Civilians. It was constructed based on ones used in Vietnam and was equipped with situational maps, computers, closed-circuit TVs, hotlines, illuminated switchboards, etc. Similar centers were created in the late 1960s across the, the United States, which were run by the Military Intelligence Group, MIG, to monitor protesters. According to the Senate report, the DPO viewed these peaceful protesters not as loyal Americans exercising constitutional rights, but as dissident forces in a counterinsurgency war. The BSSR mentioned that the police, military, and decision makers would be increasingly working together at these centers using advanced technology that allowed for the real-time collection of information and the immediate deployment of resources to deal with domestic threats. The C4IS are centers that are used by civilian and military forces when dealing with domestic threats in the new war are known as Civil Military Operations Centers CMOCs. NATO calls them Civil Military Cooperation Centers CIMICs. The CMOC is the Physical Meeting Center for Civil Affairs Units. They are located in the civilian sector and there may be more than one in a city. CMOCs can also be virtual through online networks. The deployed civil military units are also equipped with the latest tactical communications equipment including digital radios, DR, and are in constant contact with the CMOC. These centers are also connected to the Global Information Grid, GIG, which will be discussed shortly. Daily meetings take place at these centers between representatives of the military, NGOs, IGOs, private sector businesses, civilian leaders, local officials, and government agencies. One of the primary egos is the UN, which is represented by State Department officials. Some of the discussions which occur at these meetings include information pertaining to ongoing activities against domestic threats. The CMOC receives and validates information regarding domestic threats in the AO. This information may originate from the interagency or another source. It then forwards the requests to the local civil military force for action. The CMOC also coordinates the activities of civilian military forces at the tactical level, and is in constant contact with these forces. 
Communications Global Information Grid The DoD's change to NCW, which uses geographically dispersed and organizationally complex units consisting of relatively small forces, required an extensive information capability to quickly and efficiently track down an adversary that could be anywhere on the planet. The Global Information Grid GIG, developed partially by the MITRE Corporation, provides this capability. The GIG has been called the DoD's Global C4ISR Unit for NetWar. It is a globally interconnected set of information, capabilities, processes, applications, sensors, weapons, and management tools. Its information management allows for the collection, processing, storing, and distribution of information. This information is instantly available to authorized users such as warfighters, decision makers, and support personnel. Authorized people can use a variety of different devices slash systems to securely access the information anytime, any place on the planet. It also connects facilities such as bases, posts, camps, stations, and mobile platforms. It allows for community collaboration of its geographically dispersed users. It can connect tactical forces with decision makers, essentially placing the decision makers in the battle space. Sensors and other intelligence sources connected to the GIG provide real-time situational awareness throughout the entire battle space. The exceptional situational awareness, provided by instantaneous communication, allows for better decision-making. Also networked with the GIG are directed energy weapons and other types of electronic warfare capabilities. The GIG uses existing commercial satellite and ground-based systems as its backbone. GIG nodes such as aircraft, vehicles, and ships are equipped with a digital radio, DR known as the Joint Tactical Radio System, JTRS, which is a type of computer that runs a radio application. The GIG will eventually integrate all of the DoD's information systems, services, and applications into a seamless, reliable, secure, network. The GIG is also connected to communication systems used by coalition and allied forces. According to some sources, the integration of all DOT elements into the GIG won't be completed until 2020. However, it has been functional since 2005. Each service has its own tactical mobile C4ISR system which is similar and connected to the GIG. The Marines and Navy use ForceNet, the Air Force uses Command and Control Constellation, C2 Constellation, the Army's is Land Warnet and the Warfighter Information Network Tactical, WINTT. Before explaining these tactical communications systems in more detail, it will be helpful to be familiar with the tactical mobile networks that forces are now using as a result of the DoD's transition to NetWar. These mobile networks allow for real-time information sharing and synchronization, and therefore facilitate the battle swarm. Tactical Mobile Networks Slash Digital Radios As part of the transformation to NCW the military has increasingly used a type of wireless, self-configuring, mobile ad hoc network, MANE, which is based on the mesh network standard. MANE technology was developed by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, the, the United States Army, and the Office of Naval Research, ONR, and has existed since at least the mid-1990s. A MANE does not require a fixed router infrastructure used in a regular network. Instead, each device slash node contains as a wireless router and is capable of sending and receiving data. These mobile nodes form a mobile mesh network with each other in an ad hoc manner. Each node can move independently in any direction by frequently and dynamically changing its links to other devices. Manes are rugged, secure, spectrum agile, mobile networks that form a communications system from the strategic to the tactical level. To transfer data, a Mane uses existing wireless communications systems such as wireless LANs, cellular, and satellite networks. They can function on their own or be connected to the internet. The physical devices used in a MANE are sometimes referred to as nodes, which have integrated network devices such as wireless routers and omnidirectional antennas. The nodes can be placed on aircraft, boats, vehicles, and even people. A particular device which allows for the creation of a MANE is the digital radio, DR, also called the Software Defined Radio, SDR. The military's version of the DR is the JTRS. JTRS is a vital part of NCW. It is to be used by the various services deployed in the tactical areas of the battle space to communicate seamlessly through MANES. JTRS were designed in the mid-1990s by defense contractors for the, the United States military. The technology for JTRS, however, goes back to the 1980s when they were developed by the military to be used as part of electronic warfare, EW. A JTRS is a computer that can be programmed to imitate a radio. Like a computer, it runs applications, 
which can be added and configured. One of these applications allows it to mimic a radio. A JTRS can be upgraded and programmed remotely. JTRS are multi-band, multi-mode, multi-channel radios with digital slash analog converters that have computer networking capabilities. They use a wideband networking waveform which allows them to access a range of frequencies from 2 MHz to 2 GHz, including from HF to UHF. They allow for the wireless transmission of data, voice, and multimedia files between nodes in the battle space using mainnets. Some have sensors which provide information pertaining to the environment in real time. JTRS are also connected to the gig, and can communicate with satellites using GPS receivers. They are capable of establishing communication with all other levels of command. Because the regular physical components of a radio, such as mixers, filters, amplifiers, and modulators are run by software, JTRS have a small, open physical architecture. These devices can be placed on ships, aircraft, and vehicles, tiny robots, worn on clothing, or used in handheld devices. Another type of JTRS is the Cognitive Radio, CR, which, in addition to the JTRS capabilities, has artificial intelligence, AI. It was first introduced in 1999 as an extension of the SDR slash JTRS. DARPA has been involved in the creation of CRS through programs such as the Adaptive Cognition Enhanced Radio Teams. ASSERT, and situation-aware protocols in edge network technologies, SAPIENT. Like JTRS, a CR is a computer that can run a radio application to mimic radio signal processing. Its physical architecture is small because all of the regular hardware components associated with radio signal reception is run by software. The CR is an intelligent device that is aware of itself, the needs of the user, and the environment. It understands, learns from, and adapts to its environment. The CR is not just programmable, it is trainable. It can be trained by the user or its network. And a CR is not just aware of its location, it is aware of its environment. Using its sensors, it continually monitors the internal and external environment and adjusts its parameters based on user behavior, network state, and the radio frequency environment. The CR is aware of environmental factors including heating, doors, ventilation, air conditioning, lighting, appliances, and electronic devices such as telephones, pagers, etc. It can also be equipped with audio, video, and many other types of sensors. It can be programmed to respond in a specific way when the sensors detect something particular. Like other digital radios the CR uses existing signals from cellular, radio, and satellite systems. It continually monitors these systems and adjusts its transmission and reception parameters to function within the range of unused frequencies emanating from these sources, which it uses to forms manase. The Warfighter Information Network Tactical The Warfighter Information Network Tactical, WINT, is one of the Army's C4ISR systems. It is a mobile tactical communications network that provides reliable, secure, seamless video, data, image, and voice transfer during combat. It is the Army's tactical portion of the gig. It allows for the continuous communications on the move with joint, allied, and coalition forces. WINT facilitates real-time organization of battlespace nodes using JTRS which create mainnets to keep mobile forces connected and synchronized. These mainnets allow warfighters to maintain constant battlespace situational awareness while on the move and to synchronize their attacks more precisely. It was designed for joint operations so the commander could conduct multiple simultaneous missions. It allows commanders at all levels who may be stationed at various locations throughout the battlespace to collaborate providing tactical communication from the gig to the battlespace commander. WINT links warfighters in the battlespace with decision makers. It was built by General Dynamics, Lockheed Martin, Cisco Systems, and B-Systems. The backbone for this network consists of existing terrestrial, airborne, and satellite communications systems. Land WarNet Land WarNet is another tactical communications system used by the, the United States Army which connects to the gig. It is the Army's enterprise system that moves information through a seamless network from the operational level down to the tactical level of the individual soldier. It provides integrated applications, services, and network capabilities at every level. Land WarNet uses JTRS to create a self-forming, self-synchronizing manase which allows opportunistic alliances to join the force and attack a target. It automatically dispatches nodes in an area to join the network. If connectivity is temporarily lost by a node, then priority nodes retain support by following predetermined policies. 
It also allows the commander to conduct continuous operations simultaneously. The widest range of strategic, operational, and tactical resources are available to the warfighter because Land Warnet synchronizes forces on land, air, space, and sea. Weapons platforms and sensors, as well as services and applications are also connected. NGOs, the interagency, and other decision makers can be connected to the force at the tactical level using Land Warnet. Extraordinary situational awareness of the operation is achieved by constant intelligence updates from sensors and other net-centric service updates, up to the highest levels, that have an impact on the operation. All of this is available to the warfighter in real time while on the move. ForceNet ForceNet is a reliable, robust C4ISR system used by the Navy and Marines which links nodes such as people, sensors, networks, and weapons into a networked combat force. It is used across the entire battle space, from sea, to space, to land, and is integrated with C4ISR systems of other services. It stores, processes, and synthesizes large amounts of information from all nodes in a repository that is available to users if they have proper security clearance. It uses a visual representation to allow decision makers the ability to see situational information and provides decision making tools for combat operations and logistics. It allows leaders at every level to access vast amounts of information. With ForceNet, warfighters are able to synchronize their attacks throughout the battle space. By connecting distributed groups of decision makers, warfighters, and allied forces to a common C4ISR, it allows for unprecedented levels of situational awareness essentially making them an integrated fighting force. Command and Control Constellation The Command and Control Constellation, C2 Constellation, is the portion of the gig used by the Air Force for NCW, which allows for the collaborative planning and synchronization of attacks. Its NCW-enabled C2 Constellation allows for the integration and collaboration between different nodes including satellites, weapons platforms, vehicles, and aircraft, down to small devices such as PDAs. Warfighters connected to C2 Constellation are provided with intelligence updates from a sensor network that spans from land to space. These air, space, and terrestrial nodes are available as resources to the warfighter. Joint and coalition forces are also connected to this. C2 Constellation uses JTRS to form manase, 